go. Thank you for coming, both of you, very much. I hey, hey, everybody, Jim Dedlow, AM 1230, WJOB and 104.7. We are talking with the Democratic nominee for governor, and that is John Gregg. John, uh, you're up in Hammond again. Uh, welcome. Welcome to our great city. Hey, it's great to be up here. I was up in northwest Indiana Saturday, back here again today, and it's always great to be in such a thriving area of the state of Indiana. A lot of talk about infrastructure right now where it's uh, being blasted on the national media that we have a $2 billion surplus. You're going to shave any of that off to uh, do some roads? You know, we've got a program that we've put out. It's on our webpage, gregforgovernor.com. We're taking some of that toll road money that, you know, that's been sitting in the bank, just gathering interest, and we take that, leverage that money, come up with $3.2 billion over 10 years. Um, over half the money goes back to cities, towns, and counties for roads and bridges. I know that's something that's needed very much in northwest Indiana, and it also includes local government. Then the other half of it goes for a lot of other issues like drinking water, wastewater, storm sewers, those those things that we don't talk a lot about, but we got to have if we're going to build our infrastructure. So absolutely, we're looking at that, and these are things we can do without increasing taxes. That's something nobody wants to do. Uh, but I think we do realize that we've got this money in the bank, and I want to be prudent, but by the same standpoint, you know, when your roof's leaking, you fix your roof. And uh, we've got some, uh, I'm glad we've got that money in the bank but we're neglecting cities towns our schools and our infrastructures in horrible shape and it's and it's no worse anywhere in the state than it is up here you just mentioned schools. You're going to spend all that money on a road. You're going to have enough money to uh, pump some money into the schools. Absolutely. How are you going to do that? Absolutely. We've got. A, I've got a plan with Glenda Ritz because we work with the school teachers rather than against them to make our education system better. We've got a plan for pre-kindergarten statewide, about 160 million dollars. Uh, many many years ago, as you know, I was Speaker of the House, but I also learned from when I was President at Vincennes University. Uh, I understand budgets, and we've gone through looking at waste inefficiencies plus my current opponent and his boss said no to some federal dollars that we're going to take those federal dollars are our tax dollars sent from people of northwest indiana southwest indiana to dc and uh, we're going to take that money and that'll help us do the uh, pre-kindergarten program all across the state so again through good management cutting out waste and inefficiencies federal dollars reprioritizing doing away with that crazy i step test uh, where teachers can get back to making uh, education about students, not about politics and ideology. Holcomb or Pence, does it matter to you who you run against? You know what? Issues are the same. Um, my current opponent, emphasis on current, has said that he's proud to run on Pence's record. And, uh, you know, he was handpicked by Governor Pence to uh, fill the vacancy when they fired the lieutenant governor, the former one. He was handpicked by him to take his place. He says he's proud to run on his record. And I want to remind Northwest Indiana that's a record where our per capita income has dropped from 34th to 39th. That's 78 eight hundred dollars less per family of four in the state of indiana family of four sits down for supper tonight northwest indiana they make seventy eight hundred dollars less than the national average that's wrong that's what we're running about high wage paying jobs like what we see here at this lab facility today we're going to see, uh, John Gregg is going to tour Hammond Group. Uh, Terry Murphy's uh, brought him up here along with uh, Hammond Mayor Tom McDermott. Let's talk about that. To win this thing, you're going to need a huge plurality out of uh, Northwest Indiana. Absolutely. you got a riff right now between uh, Mayor McDermott right there and Sheriff John Bunchich. Any, uh, how's that affecting the campaign? You know what? Uh, we're all on one page about electing a governor up here. The, okay. the, the rift, I think, you know, anything about there being a rift, it's about people up here realizing that Northwest Indiana has not been treated fairly. I'll let you pundits call it whatever you want to, but I know both of them are excited about our campaign, and that's what we're about. Moving Indiana forward. Best ideas of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. Ed Beershank with the Times wants to hit you with a sure, couple. Ed, yeah. What are you doing up here today? Why is it important to visit this well, facility? First of all, this is this is kind of the economic engine of the state of Indiana. It was in northwest Indiana when I was a young man, and we've got five areas. We've got 21st century logistics, advanced manufacturing are two great areas of the five we want to focus on for high growth, high wage paying jobs. This facility here on the lead acid batteries is phenomenal. These are good paying jobs. 
jobs. It combines high tech and advanced manufacturing, exactly what we want to focus on. You know, um, I'm very proud, and I'm of the age to remember when Northwest Indiana's economy kept the rest of the state going. And like the people up here, I live in a corner of the state and know what it's like to be left out and forgotten about. So I'm up here to show people that I care and that I'm going to do everything I can within my power of governor to see to it that all four corners of the state and Northwest Indiana feel that they're part of Indiana, they're part of our economic success as we move forward. You know, both uh, Hammond and Gary have uh, big problems as far as environmental problems and the sewers and the sanitary systems. Is there anything you can do to help? Uh absolutely, absolutely. If you look at our infrastructure plan, that's why we have actually set aside some of our money for infrastructure for wastewater and sewers, storm sewers, drinking water, industrial water. We specifically address these things for communities because it's real tough for communities to get monies. They don't even have matching monies for federal dollars and the cost of it's so expensive and if these communities are going to grow they've got to have access to capital that's why we take some of this money that's just sitting there and we use that to leverage for low cost low um, low cost low loan no loan borrow matching grants all kinds of things in our program check it out gregforgovernor.com it's in there in great detail all right. Hey, thanks a lot to Ed, and thanks a lot to uh, uh, nominee uh, Greg. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I'm Jim Dedlow, AM 1230, WJOB, and 104.7, and I'm out!